Hi, and welcome to another episode of Castle Melting Support, the show where we answer all of your questions. Now, our question today comes from India, and a bloke over there wants to know, all my customers are asking me how many calories my beer contains. Can you please tell me how to calculate this? The calories in beer are not a subject anybody actually wants to know, but for many reasons, we actually have to know this information. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down each and every step of the process as well as going quite a bit in detail. Now I apologize well in advance, this is going to be a slightly longer episode, but we really want to kind of get into the uh, nitty gritties of actually understanding what is entailed when it comes to caloric content of beer. Okay, so the first thing to note is that when we talk about calories in beer, we are working with a certain amount of constants. Now, there's not any fat, well, the fat amounts in beer is negligible, but there are other constants for our other components, namely carbohydrates, alcohol, and protein. The constants we're referring to are carbohydrates at four calories per gram, protein at four calories per gram, and alcohol at seven calories per gram. Based on that, we can actually go ahead and make a lot of calculations. For our example beer today, we're going to be using Castle Malting's Belgian Saison. It has an original gravity of 1057 and a final gravity of 1008, which will give us approximately 6.5% ABV, but we'll get to that later. To calculate Plato from SG, Simply take your SG values and plug them in to the spaces highlighted in orange in the formula above. In our example beer, this will give us 14 degrees Plato. By the way, the Plato scale is a representation of the amount of sugar within a particular volume. And one degree Plato is equivalent to a 1% sugar solution, which makes it quite nice and unique, especially when it comes to brewing. Whereas SG, on the other hand, refers to the density of um, different liquids, whereby, you know, uh, water being obviously 1.000. Now, the alcohol by volume calculation is a very simplified version, but it's great for beers up to about, say, 9 or 10% alcohol. If you're going for beers that are stronger than that, you might want to use a slightly more advanced formula. However, considering the fact that we just want to actually find out the estimated caloric content, or at least a rough idea of the correct caloric content, this calculation will do. A few calories here and there really isn't gonna matter. Okay, in order to solve for ABV, we are gonna use the following equation. ABV equals OG minus FG, in degrees Plato, by the way, multiply by 0 0.52945. And on an example, we can see that 14 degrees Plato minus two, multiply by the factor, will give us 6.3% ABV. Now, as I said before, this is not exact, but this is close enough for the purposes that we are after. And now to solve for alcohol by weight, it's as simple as taking your alcohol by volume and multiplying by a factor of 0.8. And in our example, alcohol by weight is equal to 6.35 multiplied by 0 0.8, which will give us 5.08% alcohol by weight. <laughs> and now we come to real extract, which is the measurement of the difference in density between sugars and after they are fermented. This is important for our caloric calculation, so let's give it a go. To find the real extract value, we're going to look at the following equation. RE is equal to 0 0.1808 multiply by PO, which is our original gravity, plus 0 0.8192 multiply by PF, which is our final gravity. And in the example, and we plug in our numbers, 
RE is equal to the factor multiplied by 14 plus the factor multiplied by 2, which will give us 4.1696 degrees Plato. This is the actual amount of sugars that were fermented. And now, finally, we get to the calorie calculation. And that is going to be as follows. Remember, we're going to take the total calories via, uh, by alcohol, added to the total calories by carbohydrates, and that will give you a very accurate assumption of how many calories there are per 100 ml in any given beer using this formula. So let's have a look at that. To find the total calories per 100 ml beer, we have to add the two biggest culprits in beer that have the highest caloric value, namely alcohol and carbohydrates. So, based on all the previous calculations, we can now do the following. Calculating the total amount of calories per 100 ml of beer, we are going to first work on our alcohol by weight calculation, multiplied by the alcohol constant, which is the first part of the equation. The second part of the equation has to do with carbohydrates, and we can see our constant 4. Multiply by our real extract minus 0.1, which is the ash value. And the final part is to obviously multiply all of that by the final gravity, which will give us our exact answer. So let's work through our own examples with our own Saison beer, which will be 7 multiplied by 5, 0, 5.08 plus 4, multiply by 4.1696 minus 0 0.1, multiply by 2. And if we break that down, it comes to a whopping 103.6768 calories per 100 ml. Whew, I've got to get to the gym. And there you have it. That is how you calculate different calories in your various beers. And it's interesting to note at this point that you would have noticed if you've been doing the calculations is that craft beer, generally speaking, because the higher quantities of malts uh, are going to have a lot more calories than the diet or light variants of mass-produced lagers. The reason for this is because craft beer only uses top-end ingredients most of the time. Whereas diet lagers, firstly, they have lowered the amount of alcohol and secondly, they've also used a lot more rice or corn adjuncts, which tend to ferment out fully. Therefore, you know, just becoming alcohol as well. So these are the reasons that diet, well, they're not really diet, but they, have, they contain a lot less calories than, say, a double IPA or something similar. Anyway, thank you so much for watching Castle Support. We'll see you next week with a different question. Cheers. Have a good one.